in 2022, the GPU market is still recovering slowly but surely, it's getting there. And this makes all the GPUs like the RX 480 ever so popular. Launching six years ago, back in June of 2016, the RX 480 was AMD's answer to Nvidia's GTX 1060. It came in two flavors, which was a four gig and an eight gig model, and we are testing the four gigabyte model today. And unlike Nvidia's GTX 1060, the core stays exactly the same with the two different models. So both the four gig and the eight gigabyte version have the exact same core. Getting into the specs of this card, it's sat on top of the Polaris range and it came with 2,304 stream processors and four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory running through a 256-bit bus. And this was enough to play the latest and greatest games at 1080p with very high settings. The graphics card I'm testing today is the reference card, even though it does have Asus branding on the PCB, but nevertheless, it is a reference caller and they were notorious for running very hot. However, as you'll see from this video, it doesn't get that hot. And I think these callers are some of the best looking callers ever made. I really love the reference style RX 480s. Very close between that and the 10 series reference cards as well, because they just look so good. It's also a blower style caller, so it blows the hot air out of the rear of the card instead of a conventional open shroud design where it just blows hot air pretty much everywhere. So yeah, it's a blower style fan. And this specific card has one six pin connector and AMD recommend a 450 watt power supply at the minimum to power this thing. Getting into the benchmarks now, and as always, it's done on my testing system, which has a Ryzen 5 5600G, a Gigabyte Aorus Ultra X570, 16 gigabytes of CL16 memory running at 3200 megahertz from Crucial Ballistics, and a one terabyte NVMe Gen 4 SSD. Starting off with the temperatures, it idles around 29 degrees C, which is only about nine degrees over ambient, which is pretty good, not too bad there. And the highest temperature I ever saw was 79 degrees C, which is not too bad actually, all things considered, considering it is a reference style blower cooler. So 79 degrees C, not too bad. In Unigen Superposition, I always test at 1080p medium just to keep things same between different cards. And this GPU got 7,243 in total, which is a lot more than the GTX 960, but obviously that's to be expected. Starting off with a personal favorite of mine, and that's Forza Horizon 5. On average at 1080p, it got 61 FPS on average with a 1% low of 47 FPS. This was done at the medium settings in the in-game benchmark. To be fair, it runs pretty well. It looks really good. The textures are looking quite good and even if you had the 8GB version of the RX 480 you'd be able to get away with ultra textures. Next game up is a great esports experience and that's Rainbow Six Siege. Getting 153 FPS on average and a 1% low of 117 FPS and yet again this was done on the medium preset in the in-game benchmark. This is perfect for 144Hz gaming so the RX 480 here has got you sorted. Personal favourite of mine, and it's a classic, is GTA 5. It always runs really well on card made in the past seven years, I'd like to say. However, the RX 480 got 81 FPS on average with a 1% low of 68. This was done on the high settings with two times MSAA and no advanced settings. And as always, it's my custom city driving benchmark. This game is seven years old now, so that's why it runs quite well, but it still looks really, really good. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a game I quite like. Visually, it looks really good. However, that does come at performance cost. It's not really easy to run. However, on the medium preset in the in-game benchmark, the RX 480 got 52 FPS on average and a 1% low of 32. To be fair, it still does look quite good on medium. However, I'll recommend the 8 gigabyte version of this card if you want them better textures because textures are the main providing factor of the visual experience in my opinion however not too bad from a gpu that launched all the way back in 2016. fortnite recently has been getting quite popular thanks to its no build mode so i decided to test it in this benchmark 
and it did quite well actually with 134 fps on average and a 1% low of 52. This was done with the medium settings in the battle royale map with the DX11 API running. The stutters are most likely from caching because I need to play it a bit more in future benchmarks so the caching gets done. So the performance will be quite bad to start off with but it will get better the more you play sort of thing if that makes sense. However, after that you'll be getting great performance for competitive play. F1 2021 is a personal favourite of mine, I really like racing games and it is optimised so so well. The RX 480 got 96 FPS on average and 80% for the 1% low figure. This was done at the high settings in my usual wet Australian Grand Prix benchmark. This is great performance, however you could lower to medium to get a more competitive frame rate. You'll probably get around 110, 120, something like that. So if you've got a high refresh panel, I recommend dropping to medium. However, either way, really great performance. Rounding off the benchmarks now, the good things we can take away from it is really good performance in esports games. As always, these older cards perform really well in esports games. Perfect for 144Hz and you could even get away with 240Hz if you want to lower some of them settings. However, no matter what esports game you play, the RX 480, perfect for it. Get a monitor with FreeSync Premium, perfect. And unlike some of the cards I've tested in the past, it did pretty well in all the games tested. It did cut it close in some games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The VRAM was cutting it quite close. However, good performance across the board. No game was a stuttery mess and no game was unplayable. And I reckon if you were to lower some of the settings, you'd get 60 FPS at least in every single one of these games tested. Some of the bad things are to do with this specific card and that is the 4 gigabytes of video memory. Games are just eating video memory these days and this wouldn't be a problem on the 8 gigabyte model. If you were to get the 8 gigabyte version of this card it does cost a bit more but I'd say it's worth it as there's a more future proofing but yeah I do recommend the 8 gigabyte model and you can get away with higher textures which I think is the most important graphical setting you can have. However overall I can recommend this card especially to those budding pro players who want to play Rainbow Six Siege, Rocket League, Fortnite, maybe even Warzone, Valorant, games like that. This game will run totally fine. Get a FreeSync Premium 144Hz monitor you're set to go. The gaming experience is going to be really good on this thing. Also, if you like older games, like you want to play a bit of GTA 5, stuff like that, this is perfect for that. GTA 5, let's be honest, it runs on a toaster at this point. It's not a hard game to run at all. It runs on GTX 760s, a mid-range card from 2013. So, yeah, all the games is fine. And if you want to dabble with some newer games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cyberpunk, I know I didn't test it today, but it will run on this card, so... Yeah, and it has DirectX 12 capabilities as well, so you do have some future proof in there as well. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to leave the video here. I hope you enjoyed, so like if you like the video, and stay subscribed for more GPU and tech content, and I'll catch you the next one.